Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the third video on what you can do with some of your sourdough culture that you might be discarding or just do with a bit of your sourdough culture anyway. What I'm going to do this time is crumpets. I've made crumpets a few times before but I've never made them with sourdough. And this, If you saw the previous video on making the waffles or pancakes, this sort of begins the same way by making a sponge that you let develop overnight. And it begins with two ounces of sourdough culture just straight from the refrigerator, it stipulates. I read that out earlier today and it is just straight from the refrigerator. Eight ounces of cultured buttermilk. I had somebody ask me if you had to use buttermilk. I think that might have been in the waffle recipe. I don't know that I've ever done it, but a substitute for buttermilk is uh, just regular whole milk with, uh, well, the eight ounces, probably a couple of teaspoons of, of vinegar added, and that creates a sour milk. Uh, I haven't done it, but I guess, I guess that's a decent substitute. Six ounces of uh, bread flour. And a teaspoon of sugar and a half teaspoon of salt. Now the I will be putting a link to this recipe. It does not give the recipe, however, in uh, cups. So you can have either ounces or grams. So if you haven't got kitchen scales, you'd have to try to figure out something else, I guess. Now this just gets thoroughly combined and covered allowed to develop well, overnight at least 12 hours or so. Maybe I shouldn't have used that. <laughs> I think one of the problems that I had with, if you watched the uh, video where I made the sour dough biscuits. I think my sourdough culture is thicker than some recipes are talking about. Uh, phase two of this tomorrow when we finish the finish making the crumpets it says that you can add a little extra liquid if it isn't thin enough. This is, right now anyway, it's fairly thick. I'm trying to get it down off the sides of the bowl and not wasting that much of it. That is phase one. It just gets covered now and uh, stays at room temperature for at least 12 hours. See you tomorrow when we move on to phase two. Well, day two, it's had its rest overnight. bubbled up a bit I guess and now you add half a teaspoon of baking soda and if you think it isn't thin enough you add a quarter cup of water two ounces of water and I'm going to add the water you can't see that being quite thin enough Add all the water, at least not yet. I think from various recipes that I've done using my starter, I think my starter might be thicker than the average one. It always seems that I have to do some 
some thinning down, but it's very active. Go with that initially anyway. If I need to add more water, I will. Now the uh, you use rings, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, crumpet rings. You can buy them online. Also come in handy if you want to do your own egg McMuffin type thing at home. You crack an egg inside of each one and uh, break the yolk and eventually when you remove the ring the egg is round and fits nicely onto your English muffin. I think that's alright. We'll add the half teaspoon of baking soda. This is where you should get some bubbles happening I guess. So, move over to the stove where I preheated the rings. Put the rings, I'll show you in a second, in a cast iron pan or, or a cast iron griddle, whichever you mind, are in a cast iron pan. And uh, at the very lowest heat, uh, mine is a gas range, and I've got it set on the, the very lowest heat because these cook slowly. So let's go over to the stove. Well, the rings are nicely preheated. And I'm just using the cooking spray to lightly oil the rings and the pan under the rings. I'm trying to find some way that I could uh, easily put it in the rings. I started to use, decided to use an ice cream scoop. You can see the batter has become nice and bubbly after adding that. To baking soda. Let's see what happens here. You should fill the rings about half full. And I think that one scoop, whatever size scoop that is, it's the largest I guess. I have three. You buy these things in a set of three and this is the, the larger one. Probably meant to be about a oh, I don't know, quarter of a cup I would guess that it holds. But you can fill these things any way you want to fill them. I was just trying to think of a way that I could do it without making too big of a mess. You could use a ladle or even put the batter in a measuring cup or some sort of a pitcher. And there is my three rings full. And now it is a slow process. I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. It'll let it go at least 10 minutes. I'll bring you back maybe a couple of times during that. You can already see some bubbles starting to come to the surface. At 10 minutes you determine whether or not you're going to turn them. Um, if you're going to uh, be using them immediately, like you're cooking them for breakfast or whatever, then you would turn them. Uh, if you're not going to, if you plan to freeze them and use them later, you don't turn them. The top gets cooked when you, or gets browned, it's pretty much cooked when, when I take the rings away, but the top gets browned when you use put them in the toaster uh, to serve them. So I'm going to turn at least one of these because I'm going to try it and the others I'll be saving and uh, freezing. They freeze very well. The instructions stipulate that you don't put them in your toaster frozen though. You take them out and let them thaw before you use them. So probably take them, if you're going to have them for breakfast or whatever, take them out the night before. And I'll bring you back and show you some progress on this as time goes on. We have used just a little over a minute so far. Well, this is six minutes in. They have risen to almost fill the uh, rings. And I don't know if it's showing up on the video or not, but down and around the edges here, they're starting to get dry and that's what you're looking for. And the edge of that one is also drying out. I'm hoping a lot more of the bubbles will open up like these ones are because that's the the classic look is the all of the open bubbles on top that uh, soak in all that wonderful butter and jam and whatever else you're going to use on them. Again, I'm not sure how well this is showing. They are still wet in the center 
That one seems to be wetter than the other two, actually. It depends entirely on your stove and the temperature that you've managed to, to get, but this is after 10 minutes, and I'm going to let mine go at least another two or three minutes before I turn anything. The top is supposed to be dried out, and most of those bubble holes should open up, which a, a lot more of them have. But we'll let this go for another couple of minutes anyway. Well, mine have been going for about 18 minutes. I'm going to try removing the rings. That one come off. I don't think that one is done as well. The ring is still sticking. Some reason to put the same mount in all of them, but I'll leave that one a little longer. Oh, this one I will flip, and that's the one that I will try, I guess. Nice dark brown on the bottom, but not burnt anyway. I'll take this one out, put it on a wire rack. We'll come back in a couple of minutes' time and have that one and see what it tastes like. Well, I refilled the rings, so I'm going to get at least six out of it. I think I have enough batter maybe for one more. I might get seven or so out of, out of this particular mix. And this is just off the griddle, still quite warm. Butter, and homemade plum jam going on mine. See what I think of it. Oh yeah. They are very good. A good sourdough flavor. Crisp on the bottom and soft in the center. really very good. I think they would be crispier if they were toasted rather than straight off the grill. Well, the rest of mine will be frozen and used later on anyway so I think toasting them makes them a little a little crisper but the butter soaked into those holes nicely and the jam tastes good on them. I'll show you what I get when I finish how many I get out of the whole thing and what they look like. Well, this is batch number two and I tried something a little different. I put the, a pan cover over the top of the pan and that has helped in getting the surface to dry out better. It held the heat in. I don't know if it helped with the bubbles that I'd like to see on the surface. But uh, that's after 10 minutes and I think I had that cover on for about three or four minutes. And what you just heard in the background is the toaster went off. I've, I'm toasting one to see what I think of it one of the ones that came out of the original three there. Crumpet number two out of the toaster, and I think I like the looks of that better. Um, I use a, uh, what do you call it, a toaster oven. I haven't had a pop-up toaster in, in many years. I guess that would probably still fit in a pop-up toaster. It goes quite nicely in the toaster oven anyway. Got it swimming in butter and jam again. Yeah. Same flavor, but I like that texture much better. It's crispy on top and bottom and soft in the middle like it should be. So I think I prefer to not flip any of them in the on the griddle. Finish them in the toaster. As you can see by the little bit of brown on the surface, I have been flipping them um, just for about a minute or so before I bring them out of the skillet. I like the idea of the surface being a little more done um, before you freeze them. So I don't think it makes that much difference. It did seal over some of the holes, but they're still very tasty. And if you like crumpets, I think you'll like sourdough crumpets even better. 
So thank you very much for watching and I hope you give this a try.